Hello, I am John. Uh, by day, I do software engineering. By night, I do worrying amounts of hackathon attendance and many, many other things. Um, I have a pyrotechnics license for reasons which worry me. And the uh, fluffy ball of fuzz on the right is Oscar. He's how I rub a duck program, but with a rabbit. Uh, so, yeah, I am a fairly large, uh, well, I've done a lot of hackathons in my time. This is pretty much the peak of my career where I won an eggplant and do $15 Chinese smartwatches <laughs> for a hack that in fact failed on stage. So uh, here's a quick outline of how this is going to go. Um, I, we're going to work our way through this in a kind of three-step plan to formulate killer mini events that you can take home and then utilize in your own hackathon planning. Uh, so by the end of this, what well, hopefully each and every one of you will have some form of mini event idea that you can take as a blueprint to go home and slot that into your own events to make them even better. So as I said, we're going to split these things down into groups of three. So I'm going to spend about five, ten minutes explaining the rough concept behind it. Then we're going to spend about five minutes taking some time to actually jot down some ideas surrounding that, have a chat with the people next to you, figure out what you've just learned, and then apply that to your own events. So as a general rule, we're going to be talking about how to pick the right type of event to fit yours. We're going to talk about how to flesh out those general concepts, how to make sure that these smaller things within your larger picture don't logistically smother you, and how all of this generally leads back to the concept of keeping your hackers happy, because happy hackers are usually good hackers. So when you start planning your event, there are a lot of logistical hurdles that you need to overcome. And usually, your first thoughts are on the smaller things, such as the smaller side events you may be fitting within your larger event itself. But I think that we should really be paying a lot of attention to these, because it all comes back to the happiness of your hackers. And I, so what I did to try and gauge this was I sent out a survey to a fair few organizers that I know personally, and the results that I got back were quite interesting. It seemed that events with good mini events or side activities seemed to anecdotally improve the quality of the resulting hacks. So 68% of these people thought that it improved the quality of the projects at their event. About 80% thought that it was a good way to decrease hacker stress, which in a lot of cases with these events is something that we don't really talk about, but can be a fairly large mitigating factor in terms of keeping everybody on a level playing field. But 27% thought that many events were too much hassle to organize directly. And this is the number that I really want to change, because I don't think that it takes a lot of effort to organize these smaller events. You just have to understand how to do it proactively within your larger organizing scheme. So, ideas. This is where 90% of all these mini events start. Some of my personal favorites have included an event that literally just hired a soft serve, make your own topping ice cream machine, put a whole bunch of things out at the side and said, go wild. Uh, Nerf always tends to be fairly popular at some point, although can end up with issues if you don't have enough safety glasses. Uh, I've seen smash tournaments, scavenger hunts, laser tag, karaoke, which can also have its downsides. Um, but uh, as, as a general rule, the way I like to think of it is if you were stuck in the middle of the wilderness with all the people at your hackathon around a campfire, what type of thing would you do to pass the time? And as a general rule, you tend to come up with similar types of activities. A lot, a lot of these, in fact, BitCamp took this to the logical extreme where they literally had all of their side events based around a campfire. Um, as a general rule, literally just Pinterest searching team activities can lead to some interesting ones that you can then take further. Cup stacking, everybody knows of. I'm sure most of you have probably fitted that into your event at some point or another. Um, but a common, a common thread of a lot of the best mini events that I've ever seen have been that they've been themed around what that specific event is. 
So for example, Bitcamp, who I mentioned earlier, do s'mores. Uh, YCP was set within a, uh, what's it, business school. So they made a kind of shark tank theme out of a lot of their workshops. Um, as a general rule, it's a good idea to keep a lot of these things simple, but there are still very easy ways to make them unique. And as a general rule, tend to avoid things that could result in excluding specific groups of people, things like, what's it, Cards Against Humanity, drinking games, obviously very bad idea at these types of events. Um, and as a general rule, these types of things tend to end relatively well. I have, I'm not entirely sure what happened after that photo, but I'm slightly worried for the uh, safety of the person on the floor. Um, cup stacking. Yeah, so how to keep your hackers happy. Now, once you've got your idea together, this is where you start to drill down into content and the types of ideas that aren't going to drive your organizational team insane because you're trying to design a full-blown seven or sit seven hour music festival within the middle of your six person hackathon team um, and it's something that people assume uh, gets overlooked a lot because many people tend to assume that mlh will kind of do it for them whereas realistically they will i'm sure mlh will do a, a lot of these things if you ask them to but realistically you can get a lot of improved and increased quality and um, scale of events, the amount of events that you, mini events that you've got within your larger one, purely by organizing them yourselves. So, as a, since I've realized that I have just skipped the first portion of this, what I'd like you all to do is, uh, let's see, have a chat with the people next to you and spend the next five minutes or so brainstorming some rough ideas that we can then use to flesh out in a minute. So, off you go. Right then. So, order. All right then. So, has everyone here got a? All right then, you've all had roughly three and a half minutes to come up with a killer side event idea. Does anybody want to say what theirs is? Show of hands, all right, yep. Puppies. <laughs> Good idea. Have you thought about the allergies? Yes, we'll keep them in a separate room and we'll tell people beforehand. Perfect, all right. Oh, well you too, gotcha, yep. Good concept. Anybody else? 
in the beak on the goose, get a massive cardboard cut out of a goose, blindfold people, and then try and get them to pin the goose, pin the beak on the goose. I feel like this might constitute animal abuse, but carry on. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes, yes. Fair point. Uh, add one more at the back. Oh, <laughs> I feel that could end very badly or very, very well. Oh yeah, no, it's that 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 is a that is a complete comedy sketch within itself. Okay, so now that you've got a concept in front of you. Let's have a quick chat about how to flesh that out into something that you can actually take and implement. So, building compelling mini events does not have to involve a full events crew, choreography, and a flamethrower. <laughs> For the majority of these things, you can get away with usually assigning one or two people to it and then letting them manage the majority of it. That said, Larger scale events, things like laser tag or nerf, can require a significant amount of staff participation to be conducted safely. So in a lot of these cases, you, do, you are going to want to kind of budget for people in a way to figure out exactly how much, how much of a requirement you're going to need to set aside for that period of time to handle your event. Uh, take into account your attendees' age range, interests, uh, level of sleep deprivation into account <laughs> Yeah, um, as, a, as a general rule, uh, having a movie at noon might be as just a bad idea as trying to do dodgeball at 3 a.m. Um, and when extending your content, you should also be taking into account the kind of theming of all these mini events, again, work, attempting to work that in. Um, a lot of the time, it's a good idea to have a kind of separate room, so separate it out. Um, la, um, as, a, as, as a general rule, keep these things boxed off so that if you do end up with a situation where you have half of your event huddled around playing some type of board game, it's not going to slowly spill out into the rest of your event itself. Uh, in terms of actually fleshing the content out with these things, there tends to be a fairly simple rule, that being figure out, st start by figuring out how many people are going to be interested in exactly what you're pitching. Then take that and go right. These are the people who we know are going to be interested. Who do we think are going to be interested? Who can, we, who can we take this core subset of and use them to do this and then have the rest of them go off and go, hey, this awesome thing just happened. You should come along for the next one they're running in a couple hours. And then you start to get these kind of cumulative effects where you've got this core fan base of people for this thing you've done. And then suddenly they're bringing everyone else in. And suddenly you've got this whole cumulative impact. So when it comes to building the, uh, the content of these things, the first thing that you should really be thinking about is what people it's going to appeal to, and then from there, what the ramifications are going to be in terms of your logistics flow and ensuring that it doesn't scupper anything further along. As a general rule, uh, if you have enough people on your organizational team, delegate one person to specifically handling side events and then let them take care of that as, as a kind of seg segregated thing so that, they, so that you know that that part of it is always going to be in place because there's a couple of instances I've seen where people have kind of spread it across several people and then they've gotten caught up in other things and then suddenly nothing's there. Uh, yeah, uh, as a gen general rules, a lot of them. Uh, mostly just a case of keeping an eye on the impact of what you're doing and also where your interests are going to be. So again, uh, have a chat about that, figure out what the meat of this thing is going to be and how you're going to pull it off and go.
Alright then, so by this point hopefully all of you have figured out some teething problems within the events that you've come up with. So we're going to do another show of hands and this time what I want you to do is uh, explain one issue that you've foreseen and how you're going to solve it. Um, yep. So this is just not for the petting zoo, but, um, <laughs> but if there was any other side competitions, especially competitive ones, mm -hmm. uh, you may have people who've played a game before or done it before, who are just going to be amazing at it, and people who've never played it before and may feel intimidated because they're just getting their asses whipped. Yes. And uh, for example, I went to Ball Hacks and they had um, this computer game and they had two competitions going on at the same time. And they basically had an experienced players competition and, and I've never played this game before and I just want to have a try competition. So that way people were, I, I've never played a game before, but I still felt included because I was going to get someone similar. Yeah, that's a very good point actually when it comes to any of these types of competitive games would be splitting into more experience than kind of newer people, especially because then you could actually, for the newer groups, give their, at, you, you know that the experienced people are already going to understand the concept of the game, whereas you could in fact for the, what's it, beginners groups, dedicate some time to explaining the rules and concepts behind it as opposed to the other one where you could simply dive in. Any others? Yep. Yeah, so earlier this year we did yoga at IT Hack uh, like <laughs> at night so that people who are getting tired or you know, just a bit bored can go and relax, with, uh, meditate and hopefully they're a bit more refreshed afterwards. Mm -hmm. uh, and we were lucky enough that a sponsor paid for like, professional yoga instructors to come in and do that for us. But obviously that's not possible for every, every hackathon. Uh, but we also had uh, conversations with our, our University of Yoga Society and they were really helpful and they offered to give us yoga mats and they might have trained people. Inter-SOC inter cooperation always tends to be a useful one if you can manage to pull it off. Any others? Yep. <laughs> Fair point. Any others? Or yep. Uh, so we kind of had like tournament kind of structure as well, but just um, so selecting a game that's also fun to watch, mm. you know, just not getting bored and watching other people play, mm. um, and then just splitting down into groups so that everyone feels involved. So yes, yeah, Smash tends to get used a lot as the de facto standard for those types of things. The kind of, uh, con con the, the concept of a uh, 
some of these kinds of cor corners. That, in fact, you get this a lot, a lot at hackathons sometimes, where people will like bring bring along some form of games console, and it goes in a corner with a TV, and then suddenly that kind of becomes the area that people congregate around. You create these it creates these kind of uh, you know, organic, organically created social gatherings and little areas. So I think a lot of the time, actually, you can not necessarily attempt to. Yeah, well, you can kind of attempt to foster those, but more more a case of uh, allow, allowing those their own space instead of simply kind of attempting to usher, usher them into their own areas. Unless, of course, you're kind of sitting in the middle of the main hallway, in which case you should probably attempt to shift them into a slightly different area. So, final part of all this. You have an idea, you've fleshed out how you want to pull it off, now comes execution. Uh, I very much favour um, Josh Simpson's mantra on this particular process, that being control the chaos. So ensure, ensuring that what you've got in front of you is relatively painless to actually execute. We talked a little earlier about splitting responsibilities, if you can, ensuring that there's one person who deals with this stuff. Depending on how many of mini events that you've got running at a time, because some hackathon schedules can have five or six over the course of a 48-hour period, some have more, some have less. Um, so there can be instances where you may need to delegate more than one person to ensuring that that particular event or that particular area is handled fine, potentially even uh, in terms of actual time rotors, so ensuring that you're not having the same person running the entire thing through a 48-hour period, because that could end very badly for them. Um, yeah, uh, again, consolidate these things to one space. Uh, there was one instance that I remember that uh, where one particular event, who I shall not name for reasons of this was a rather bad idea, decided to conduct a game of werewolf within their central hackathon space, that being a large area with wide open tables, which then proceeded to devolve into a pretty much half the event attempting to play werewolf across the half of the university campus. <laughs> which, yeah, you're not going to have... Campus security are not going to like you after that, and I wouldn't recommend it. So, yeah, um, you don't want to end up with a situation where everyone has no idea where they're going. So, as a general rule, make sure that you've got your side event spaces, define an area for them, make sure that it's clearly signed, make sure that everyone knows where it is. In some cases, there can be room to, in a lot of cases, you don't have a lot of space at your event. You can, these can double up as kind of general community rooms as long as you don't have to end up with a situation where you're having to turf people out of one room just because it needs to be used for a different thing. That can, that's not something that you should really be aiming for. <laughs> and finally, just have fun with it. There's, there's no reason why these events should be massive logistical nightmares or extremely stressful, detail-oriented endeavors. All they really are are just fun little things to put on at the side of your event to make sure that the people there have Something that they can focus on within the 48-hour kind of narrow mindset of getting something built and getting it out there and being able to break out of that for a while and say, hey, this isn't all, what's it, mindless stress and endless bugs. It's also, an, uh, there's also areas where you can just kind of, everyone has friends at hackathons, so you just take them, go have some fun, move the hacker stress out of that kind of paradigm a little. So, by the end of this, hopefully, everybody in this room should have a pretty good idea of something that they want to fit into their event, or at least a good idea of kind of... Um, well, they'll, you should have a good idea of what you want to fit into your event. You may not have a good idea of how you want to do it quite yet within your own kind of organisational structure. So, as a final show of hands, does anyone want to uh, have a chat about what they've come up with so far? Go on. My entire audio idea. Yep. Oh, oh yeah, just run through it. Detail on the goose. <laughs> but basically, <laughs> <laughs> um, if you have printing credits, just print out like a massive, massive sheet of paper that has a goose on it. It's a giant goose. Yeah, and then just print out the tail. 
Because that game never gets old as proven by all kids' birthday parties. I can't say I expected this to be the exact topic of conversation, but I am quite intrigued. Uh, any others? Yeah. All right, everyone's got, oh, yep. Uh, we, we had a uh, Mario Kart one Oh, yep. Um, we thought like, what was quite an important thing is, because um, like, for a lot of it, it's to have fun. And so like, we wanted to structure the tournament in a way that Slowly pare it down afterwards. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like. Yeah, I like that. Keeps keeps everything kind of rolling. Yep, at the back. That might be the. That might be the. That might be the most inventive twist on cup stacking I've heard of in a very long time. <laughs> Marshmallow and spaghetti stacking. This doesn't have the same ring to it. All right then. Um, yep. If you've got nothing else, then hopefully, this has given you a pretty good framework for how to carry all this stuff on on your own. So. Uh, thank you very much, and I will see you around.